Hey everyone, it's Jacob again, and I thought I'd do uh, a short little video on meals and etiquette um, in, in Psalm 1. A lot of this will be sort of more, more cultural and less grammar, but still pretty important. And just first caveat out of the gate, um, this can get really, really complex and pretty deep, and I am not the expert, but I'll give you sort of my outsider's viewpoint uh, and maybe some pointers if that's helpful, but you can go really, really deep anytime you get into um, someone culture, particularly someone's speeches. So on the, we're going to just very, we're going to touch this pretty lightly today. And I might put out more videos in the future sort of on the same topic, but it's, it's going to be really high level. And I'll try and point out where this is very high level and you can go deeper here, here, here. Um, but it'll just be at least a first all overview um, just around etiquette around around meals and I'm, I'm going to try and touch on more formal meals and less sort of like hey you're just getting together with your family um, but we'll, we'll see how this goes uh, so anyway without further ado uh, I thought we'd talk about just sort of the original the initial setup of um, more formal meals uh, in the Samoan culture some of the protocol that goes along with that and then I thought I'd try and do a little bit of a deeper dive on the thank you speech that, that typically comes after one of these meals. Again, I'm not gonna try and be the expert about, hey, include all of these things in your speeches. I don't know that that much, so I can't put that much in there. Um, definitely, if you guys are watching this and you feel like you wanna share, absolutely add a comment, uh, let me know, um, but I'll do my best. So without further ado, um, the setup, the way that I would look at this is in any, uh, someone sort of uh, more formal meal setting you typically have a host and there might be consider them to be like dignitaries of the host so if this is a village function you're definitely going to have the uh, you know the village chief and, and some other dignitaries within the village and then the guests are going to be the same way they're going to be the sort of dignitaries of the visiting party um, you know guests like you might think of it and then there's gonna be a whole lot of folks that are helping sort of get the meal ready um, to actually serve the food. And typically these are all sort of folks that are that are related to the host in some way, shape or form. They might be blood relatives, they might just sort of be um, other folks within the village hierarchy, things like that. Um, I, I think I, I would call them the Autautua, the, the but you can call them the alfaikuka or whatever. Um, so the auto are those that are actually kind of serving at the meal. And I'm a little bit nervous saying any of this stuff because it's been a long time since I've been involved in anything like this. So please let me know if I'm totally off script here. Um, but this is sort of how I remember it at least. Um, and just as background, I served as a missionary in Samoa and whereas it's not like I was part of a lot of these large sort of village functions, um, the same type of protocol would exist when we would eat meals with, with families in the sense that the typically the father, the mother, the family would be sort of that host role. The out tool would basically be the kids or other family members that were sort of helping out. And then me and, and uh, sort of my missionary companion would be sort of these, these guests that um, were being, you know, honored and respected through this, through this meal. Um, which at first for me would make me really, really uncomfortable because it's, it's really weird having all this kind of people serving you like that. Um, but it certainly was meant to be a gesture of respect and, and uh, admiration for the things that um, they saw missionary services being. Uh, so moving on, kind of the protocol, I guess the things that I would remember in the beginning, uh, I, I guess I talk about seating. So if you're coming from a Western culture, um, in, in typically in Samoan meals, you're not sitting at a table and chairs. You're you're sitting on the floor, cross-legged, and you're going to be eating um, your your meal sort of on the floor. There'll be a, a mat called a lao lao, um, and then you'll you'll kind of have your dishes served there. Um, the thing to point out: not everyone is really good at sitting cross-legged. Not everyone sort of is used to that or flexible. So it may be difficult for you to sit for long periods of time cross-legged like that. Uh, so try your best to do it. If you just can't stand it anymore, do not point your feet out in the middle of the circle where everyone is sitting. Oh, by the way, everyone's sitting in a circle. Um, you're going to need to point them outside the circle. And just think of that as being like really rude. People are eating and you're showing them the dirtiest part of your body, like the bottom of your foot that touches all the ground. So that's why you don't point it in the middle. 
you, you have to point outside the circle and you have to excuse yourself. But just so you know, you're going to be sitting on the ground. You're not going to be sitting at a table. And of course, if you're just with friends or whatever, there might be accommodations made where like, hey, guys, sit at the table. We don't have to, you know, sit down here or whatever. But in a traditional gathering, it's going to be um, cross-legged on the ground. Uh, typically, they'll start with prayer. Uh, so that's what phylotu is. Uh, Loto is, the, is, is a word for prayer in Samoan, um, and then phi is the verb to do. Uh, and then at these larger, more formal type of uh, meals or, or gatherings, there will often be someone at the very beginning who does what's called the furofora sua. And really what this is, it literally translates to announcing the meal. And this is, again, a pretty heavy speech. Typically, you'll have a talking chief give this type of a, a speech. And so we call those tulafales or failaungas. Um, and they're literally going to be basically, there, sometimes there's different sort of proverbs that are being thrown out there, or there's different sort of, uh, sort of deeper sort of uh, reflections back on some Samoan uh, type of fables and things like that. But effectively, what they're doing is they're announcing all the different types of food that are being brought to the table or, or, or for the for the feast. Uh, so I'll kind of get in a little bit into that, but think of it as, hey, if, there, if, there, if, there, if there's going to be a pig, they're going to announce, hey, here's this pig and here's this cow and here's all this other food that has come here. And there's there's typically um, more flowery language that's being brought in because it's, it's almost poetry that if you think about it. It's really hard for me to describe this because I don't know of a, an equivalent in Western culture. But suffice it to say, in the beginning, typically there's going to be someone standing up and they're going to be announcing all the different food there. And it's meant to pay respect to all those, to basically the host um, and, and, and sort of what they're, what they're bringing. I mean, it's, it's kind of um, acknowledging how much they are giving towards this event. Um, in the middle, I mean, it's, it's eating, so I'm not going to try to overcomplicate that. But one thing just to remember, again, if you're coming from a Western culture, Eating with your hands is, is more than okay. It's, it's, it's expected. It's totally appropriate. Um, I'm not saying that you never use, uh, you know, silverware or something like that. Like if you're eating soup and, or, you know, oka or whatever, yeah, you're going to have a spoon. But just don't be afraid to eat with your hands. Um, and in the end, um, I guess there's two things I wanted to highlight here. So when everyone's finished, you definitely don't want to finish before everybody else. So you're just sitting there doing nothing. So you kind of want to be conscious of where everyone else is at in, in terms of the meal. But when you are done, you feel like kind of everyone else is sort of at that same uh, spot, you or somebody else might start um, by basically signaling uh, sort of that initial thank you for the meal. And, and what you literally do is say, which means basically thank you for the food preparation. Thank you for all the respect. And you'll actually push your plate away from you a little bit. Um, and so, I don't know, if you're in this situation, I'd wait for somebody else to start and then you can do the same thing. Um, and then at the, at the very end, what typically happens, again, more of these formal gatherings, definitely not more at a close family sort of just casual dinner. But you'll typically have someone who represents the guests um, basically um, give a, a thank you speech to the host. Um, and I'll go over some of the details of that and some of the nuances of what can happen in, in terms of back and forth between the guests and the host. Sorry, I'm not sure if I said that right, but you have someone representing the guests saying thank you to the host. So, like I said, I'm not going to try and, and say, oh, this is how you give a someone thank you speech. I don't know. You guys can Google that somebody, somewhere else, but I at least want to tell you generally what is happening and, and, and what the, the, the whole sequence really is. Um, there's, like I said, when it comes to anything someone speech related, this is a topic that, that people can study for, for years and they really work on perfecting this. Um, it's very poetic. And like I said, in, in the Samoan sort of hierarchy and culture, I mean, the high talking chiefs are some of the more, most highly regarded folks within, you know, Samoan society. And this is their specialty, and it's and it can be almost competitive in terms of who can like give the best, you know, most eloquent speeches and kind of pull up these very deep sort of uh, proverbs or, or sort of th this is very deep and, and uh, figurative language, and it kind of can blow people's minds like, oh man, I'd never heard that one before. 
Uh, and so it, it's really hard to describe. I, I, I can't think of a single equivalent in, uh, in Western culture, uh, but I'll try and walk through it. So basically, if you were the one who was giving this speech, usually the first thing you do is you acknowledge that you're representing your party. So in this case, you're representing the, the guests at the party. So you'll stand up and say, hey, I'm representing the guests here. Then what you'll typically would do is, is you will give thanks to the host, but oftentimes you'll actually see first that there's some thanks being uh, pray, uh, raised to, to God. Samoa is, is I, I think, almost like 99% plus Christian, um, and it's, it's pretty much interwoven with the culture now. I, I'm not sure how it was prior to sort of Western missionaries coming into the society, but that's typically what I've seen at least. Um, and then there's obviously thanks being given to the hosts and, and typically thanks given to others. That sounds really simple. It sounds like, oh, thank you, host. Thank you, you know, others. But in reality, these can be very, again, flowery, figurative kind of languages um, in terms of how you actually convey that thanks. And, and like sometimes, like I said, it can be a little bit, oh, you're almost kind of showing off just how much you know, or maybe that's how I felt it was. Maybe that's not really how it is. Um, but it, it can get really like, wow, I didn't even understand what that was, but man, that, that sounds great. And, and, and it's, it's all, it gets a little bit competitive in some ways. Uh, so anyway, after you give thanks, you're also, you know, coupling that with um, asking for blessings or giving blessings to the host for all their generosity and for everything that they've done. And again, the intent here is that you do want to acknowledge all of the different things that, that the host has been contributing, the, the uh, honor and the respect that they've paid to you as guests. You really want to acknowledge all that, and, and that is a form of, of thanking them. Now, what will happen after you've finished that speech, uh, what will happen is that the host, or representative of the host, rather, typically will stand up and they'll give a reply. And this can sometimes be just as long as, as the initial speech, um, and they'll kind of, and sometimes they'll do, um, it, it kind of depends on how it goes, but they'll kind of do the same thing. They'll, they'll be like, thank you for coming and, you know, bless you. And, and it'll kind of go back and forth a little bit. Sometimes they will um, deprecate themselves. Like they, they might say, sorry that the food was terrible or something like that, which is ridiculous because the food was great. But it's almost this way of, you know, by me, you know, by us putting ourselves down, we're putting you further up and we're showing you even more respect. And so what this sometimes uh, garners is that the, the guests then feel like they have to get up again and respond and say, not at all. This was the greatest meal I've ever had in my life. Um, and so it kind of goes back and back and forth and back and forth. And like I said, you'll hear these proverbs being thrown out there. Like I remember one uh, that I heard was, you know, and that means like, hey, this person believes that you guys have truly just completely emptied out the, the fisherman's basket, uh, which sounds weird, but it's supposed to mean like, hey, you've given us every single thing. That's incredible how you know honored we are. Um, wow, we are so grateful. So these things can go, kind of go back and forth depending. Um, and, and sometimes, like, like I said, um, you know, I, I've seen ones where uh, the host tried to offer to pay for all of this this meal, and it was it was insulting to to the uh, to the host and it kind of went back and forth. You know, there was all threats of like, you know, we'll leave and we'll never come back unless you accept our token of gratitude. Um, and it was, you know, it was fine. They never come back rather than accept this like payment for, for what they've done. So it's, I'm not saying it goes there all the time, but just in general, that's sort of how some of these have worked, at least in, in my experience, how I've seen it go back and forth. And there is lots of stuff that can be said in these speeches that I might even understand the words, but I have no idea what it means because they're talking about, uh, you know, the, the lupe or the, sorry, the pigeon flew in the jungle and something else happened. And I think that means something, but you have to know the, the sort of the Samoan fable in order to understand what in the world that means. Um, it, it's, it's, it's very idiomatic at times, some of the, the speech language that comes out. And then the, there's also honorific words that come out where, you might know the regular word for something, but you don't know the honorific word for it. And so it just sound, sounds like a brand new sort of word to you that you've never heard before. So I'll go over a little bit of those, that in the vocab section, but just I at least wanted to get you familiar with, if you've ever been to one of these events, 
you've probably seen this go back and forth and at least from my perspective this is the general format and again it's very much um, kind of you see this same theme kind of going about in someone culture it's this very much it's very important to pay respects to one another so there's the um, see I guess what, what would I call it? the va fi way it's this uh, relationship of respect that's important within one another and it is truly like uh, a common thread in, in almost all Samoan cultural exchanges. And this just happens to be one of those manifestations of it. It's, it's just um, it, it, just like in, in, in most cultures, I think it's important to feel like you're, you're viewed in society by how well you can be a host and that's the same in Samoan, but this is sort of how some of that comes out. And the same thing with guests, everyone wants to be a good and gracious guest and everyone wants to be a good and gracious host. This is how some of that comes out. Um, but it's, it, it gets very, very deep in, in, in Samoan. And it's really hard for me as an outsider to, to even begin to kind of scratch the surface into what this all means. But at least you'll kind of know what's happening because otherwise it looks pretty weird. Like, I mean, why are all these people shouting at each other suddenly? It doesn't always get to that, but like sometimes it does and you're just like, what's happening? All right, so that being said, eventually after all the back and forth, it will end. During back and forth, you actually might um, hear that as the person giving the speech is saying something, you might hear the crowd say things like, Marie, Marie. And that means like, absolutely agree, uh, you know, right on. And they might say like, Awa, Toia, or, and they might, which means like, don't stop. Like, so if they're, if they're doing that self-deprecation thing where they're saying sorry for all the, uh, you know, for how bad everything was, you know, you might hear people in the crowd saying like, no, no, not at all. And, and it's kind of like that. It, those aren't speeches, that's just sort of like kind of muted, uh, real-time replies and then you'll hear someone represent uh, the other side to actually kind of bring that all together in a response speech anyway that's pretty jumbled hopefully it's helpful um, as with as with all of these I tried to put together some vocab that I thought might be helpful for when you are in a meal setting so like I've done in other videos I'll go through I'll pronounce the Psalm one and then obviously you'll see the English translation to the right you'll notice that I've put a lot of honorific uh, words in here because when it comes to food particularly when it comes to speeches um, and you because again when you're accepting sort of this the respect of hosts you do want to use your honorific terms as much as you possibly can because that is that that's that's just good uh that's just you being a good guest uh so i'll try and point those out um, and some of these that you've seen in other videos so it'll be a little bit of a repeat but it seemed appropriate given the topic so I'll start on the left-hand side here. Um, so I, I is to eat in Samoan. It's the common verb to eat. Inu is to drink. Inu. Uh, taumafa and tausami. Taumafa and tausami are both honorific words to eat. Meai uh, or mea taumafa is the Samoan word for food. It literally translates to uh, eating thing. Uh, so me, I think you eat and think, uh, yeah, I think you eat food. Au, au is a Samoan word for like team or group. Uh, tautua, tautua is a verb um, which literally means to serve a chief. So that's why I called that the, the people that are kind of helping with the service, bringing the plates and taking away the dishes and all that stuff. I, I call them the au tautua, but maybe I'm wrong in that. So someone definitely, if you, if you feel like I got that wrong, let me know. Uh, launga, launga is the... Someone word for speech, like formal speech. Faftai, hopefully you've heard that before. Faftai is the someone word for thank you. Porofola, porofola, it, it literally means to announce. You, you it, I'll just leave it at that. It means to announce. Um, like some, even like on a radio, you, porofolanga would be the word for uh, announce. Sua, sua is an honorific meal, uh, honorific word for the daily meal. So again, fora fora sua is to announce the meal that, that's being had. Uh, now I'm going to get into some foods. So moa, moa is the regular word for chicken. The honorific word for chicken is ta bai bai. Ta bai bai literally means to kind of like hunt and peck about. It basically describes exactly what a chicken does all day long, just walking around and, and just pecking at the ground. Uh, bovi, bovi is the regular word for cow. Um, and you can know that that's actually an imported word. It actually comes from bovine. Uh, and then, so the honorific word is manupalangi, which literally means 
Palangi animal or you know uh, animal that came from Westerners. Uh, so that that can kind of make sense. It, it's not a native animal to to Samoa. So Manupalangi is the honorific word for cow. Uh, oh, I forgot about Bua. Bua is the regular word for pig and Manufata. Manufata is the honorific word for pig. And what that literally translates to, it's the animal that's carried on the uh, sort of platter that people put on their shoulders. So that thing that people put on their shoulders to carry sort of something that's almost like a stretcher is called a fata. So this is a manufata. And that's, think of that like that suckling pig that comes in as people kind of haul in this gigantic pig with like burnt skin. Um, anyway, that's the manufata. Um, mia ano. Mia ano is, it's basically like starchy food. So it could be rice. It, it, it could be, it's most often taro, but that's kind of a, a, a classification of foods. And some of the foods that fit in that classification would be, of course, talo. Uh, talo is the regular word for taro. The honorific word for taro is fuauli. Fuauli, it, it really means fruit of the dirt or f kind of black fruit, I guess, is probably what it translates to. Um, but that's the honorific term, fuauli and, and talo. Ulu, ulu is breadfruit. And there might be an honorific, honorific word for that, but I didn't know off the top of my head what it was. Uh, fai is banana, wufi is yam, umala is sweet potato, and manioka is uh, tapioca. So those are all starches. Uh, uru, fai, wufi, umala, and manioka. Honestly, I don't know that you would eat a lot of manioka in Tonga. They, they eat a lot of manioka. Um, umala, maybe sometimes, but definitely you'll see wufi, fai, and uru all the time, and definitely talo all the time. Uh, Next, some of the words, uh, some of the things you might see at, at some of these feasts are parusami or luau. Um, in my opinion, these are the exact same foods. They're just different words for the same thing. Um, and I don't even know if it's regional. I feel like I heard both in Western Samoa. I feel like I heard both in American Samoa, so I'm not sure what the differentiation is. But basically, it's, it's taro leaves with some coconut milk and some onions and some salt. And you wrap it up and you cook it in the umu. Uh, it's really, really good. Uh, fai'ai. Fai'ai is, I'm not exactly sure how you make it, but it's basically coconut milk and onions. It's kind of like the same filling, but no taro leaves, and you cook it in a coconut shell. And you can put it with different things. So you can have it all by itself, which is fai'ai fua, or you can have it with octopus, fai'ai fe, or, you know, fai'ai pa, which is uh, fai'ai with crab. So there's just, you can put different stuff in it, um, but that's what fai'ai is. Ia. Ia is fish. It's a very general term. There's lots of different kinds of fish, and I wouldn't be able to name all of them, just like I can't name them in English. Um, so Ia is a pretty safe word. If it's a fish, you can call it Ia. Fe. Fe is an octopus. Uh, I didn't eat a lot of this, but it's there. Uh, ota or Oka. This is uh, sort of like a raw fish soup with coconut milk and, and onions, sometimes cucumbers. It's awesome. It's like probably one of my favorite Samoan foods. Uh, Sapusui. I think you see this quite a bit, but it's it's uh, a Samoan version of chop suey. So it's like those cellophane noodles and soy sauce and chicken typically and, and some other stuff. It's really good. And it's definitely obviously coming from uh, Asian influence as well, but it's good. Fua moa. Fua moa means chicken fruit and it's uh, an egg. Uh, new. New is a young coconut. These are the coconuts that you drink. So typically they're green. They're, they're the ones on the tree. You actually have to pick them from the tree. Um, and it's got, and the juice inside is actually sweet, and the flesh is very thin and kind of uh, jello or rubbery. Um, and then popo, popo is the um, older or mature coconut. These are the ones that are on the ground; they're brown, and the the meat is very thick and rigid. And the the, the juice inside typically is not particularly sweet. Um, it's usually pretty bitter. Um, and then what I didn't put a chance on here, but you have it in almost all Samoan foods, is pepe, pepe is uh, coconut milk, um, which obviously comes from the popo. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. You know what, I should have put on here, falifu. Falifu is uh, a way of cooking a lot of the, the starchy foods you saw over there. Um, it's, a, it's a way of cooking the starchy foods with coconut milk. And so you have falifu fai, falifu ulu. You can kind of, and basically you, you, you kind of uh, take boiled fai or ulu or whatever, and you mix it with a pepe and then, and that's how you get funny for whatever. 
Uh, anyway, I hope this was helpful. Uh, again, let me know if you if you like this kind of thing, hit the like button, or if you want to see more of this kind of thing, uh, hit subscribe. Just let me know if this stuff is helpful. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Bye.